What we're seeing in our initial explorations using L'Hopital's rule is that there are hierarchies of growth. There is this rich taxonomy of functions that grow to infinity. We have linear growth, and we have quadratic growth, and cubic growth, and it keeps going and going. Below that, we have growth like square roots or like cube roots. This entire polynomial hierarchy of different levels or orders of growth. But below all of this lies the logarithmic growth and all sorts of combinations and powers thereof, all of which are dominated by polynomial growth. But polynomial growth itself is dominated by exponential growth. And that one function, e to the x, is the boundary line between these worlds of sub-exponential and super-exponential growth. Wait a minute, what do I mean by super exponential growth? Is there anything faster than exponential growth? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Of course, one can compose exponential growth with, let's say, a polynomial exponent. And we can look at not just e to the x, but things like e to the x squared or e to the x cubed. We can reproduce that entire polynomial hierarchy in super exponential growth. That's really cool. Man, those functions grow so quickly. You can hardly imagine anything faster. But, of course, there is. There's no limit to growth rates. They keep going. What about e to the e to the x? Oh, man, that really grows fast. And there's no end. You can imagine faster and faster growing functions. But I wonder, what's the most useful, fastest growing function out there? My vote would be for the gamma function. The gamma function, which we alluded to way back in chapter one, is a function that is defined in terms of an improper integral. Gamma of x is the integral as t goes from zero to infinity of t to the x minus one times e to the negative t dt. Now that's weird. We haven't really gotten to integrals yet. Don't worry about that. This function has the property that gamma of x plus one equals x times gamma of x. And what that means is that this gamma function is really like x factorial. To be precise, gamma of n plus 1 equals n factorial for n, a positive integer. Okay, so this function is factorial-like. It grows really fast, but it's really, really useful. This function shows up all over the place in mathematics, in high dimensional data analysis, in number theory, just all over the place. But it is a fast growing function. It is really fast. This factorial growth dominates almost any other type of growth that you are going to see organically. Well, how do we show something like that? How do we show that factorial growth beats exponential growth? Well, we can do what we do. Take the limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x divided by gamma of x. And let's just think about how we compute that. Oh, I don't know. This is not so obvious. What do I do with that improper integral thing? Well, it is true that this limit equals zero. It is true that factorial growth dominates exponential growth. But why? How do we show that? Well, we're just not going to worry about that right now. What I will tell you is that this function, gamma of x, has a growth that is similar to the function x to the x. Oh, wow, I didn't think about that. Oh, yeah, that function should, like, really take off. x to the x, you kidding me? But what exactly do I mean by that? Well, this is encoded in something called Sterling's formula. Whoa, bonus material. We don't need to know the details of that yet because it's a little difficult to get at exactly what I mean by as growth similar to, because it's not exactly the same as x to the x. There are some subtle differences, but how do we specify that? How do we quantify subtle differences in growth rates? That is the goal of this chapter and the next. For now, 
Don't worry about the details of the gamma function. Don't need to know anything about that. What we're focused on is orders of growth.